أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم ولعنا أعدائهم أجمعين قال الله تعالى في محكم كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فليضحكوا قليلا وليبكوا كثيرا جزاء بما كانوا يكسبون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse in Surah Tawbah in verse 82 He said when he talks to us he said let them cry a lot and laugh little for one reason because of what they do so based on what I do in my life, I could either laugh or I could either cry. This is how life is. When it comes to laughing, we could laugh in this world when it comes to fun and enjoying ourselves and we forget that which is important. We cross to the other world and then we start to cry because we have not taken anything with us. Or we could do this, the opposite, we could laugh in this world because we've done all that which is good and we could go to the afterlife and we could also laugh for taking all the good things with us. So one has to make sure which path he wants to take when it comes to laughing and crying. Because in the next few days we're going to celebrate Eid, the end of the month of Ramadan. A lot of people might misunderstand the concept of Eid. A lot of people eat for them as a day where they celebrate the fact that they can eat and drink and do all the things they can't do during the day. So basically we go to the animalistic side in ourselves. We want to go become the animals that we were before the month of Ramadan. Even though it might be a little bit harsh, but this is the reality of it. We just consume food and drink so we forget. To some people this is what Eid is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if you want to be happy on the day of Eid, ask yourself a very important question. Have you accomplished anything in this month? 30 days, 30 nights. Did you reach anywhere? Have you felt in your heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you? Have you felt the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because to a lot of people and no friends of mine, when it comes to the night of Eid, they sit on a phone and a message and they start to cry. Because they realize that they are guests in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. In this month is a special month where they are the guests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closed the gates of hell, opened the gates of heaven for them. So it's a special month for them. So to see that month passes away it brings sadness to their hearts. They start to cry, not to be happy and joyous. So one needs to ask himself and understand where am I standing? Am I, being, am I going to be among those who are happy or those who are sad? So we need to ask ourselves, what does Eid mean to us? What does it represent to us? Is it happiness, food and eating? Or is it trying to obtain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Which is that we want? Now I want to quickly read some verses and parts from Dua Abi Hamad Tumani where he talks about the concept of how who God is and how we deal with God. One, in the beginning of the dua of Abi Hamdat Thumani, he talks about our state with God, how we deal with God and how God deals with us. And based on that you can see, should I be laughing, or should I be crying, or should I do? We see that he starts with, he says, Alhamdulillah alladhi ad'uhu fayujibuni. This is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask him, and in return, he answers my calls. No one does that but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What in kuntubati and inayadouni? Allah says, come to me, and I say, you know what, maybe tomorrow, maybe, you know, I'll delay my prayer two or three hours. I'm not ready yet. Allah invites me, and I am very slow. But yet, Allah says, fine, you know, I'm going to invite you again. Walhamdulillah alladhi as'aluhu fayu'tini wa in kuntu bakhilan. 
in a separate way. Allah gives me everything. That whatever we have today is because Allah gave it to us. When God asks us to give some small piece of charity, two dollars, one dollar for charity, we find it very hard to give. So we become stingy, bukhala, for everything that He gave us. Someone needs to understand where am I standing when it comes to that. Walhamdulillah alladhi unadihim kulla ma shaktu bihaanjati Every time I needed something, I call it to God. God always gives me. What do I give in return to God? Alhamdulillah alladhi la adu'u ghayrak wa la ud'a'udu ghayrak la misal bihli du'a'i This is something that we do in our lives that sometimes we have favors, we have needs. We ask other people, but they don't always come to our help. They don't always come to our aid. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no. Every time you ask upon me, I will answer your call. So we get to see how merciful, how generous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and how stingy and how bukhala we are. So one is to see himself, where does he stand? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the dua says, وَالْحَمْدُلِلَّهِ الَّذِي وَحِلَنِي إِلَيْهِ فَأَكْرَمَنِي وَلَمْ يَكْلِمِي لَلنَّاسِ فَيَهِنُونِي If my life has to depend on people, then I will be humiliated. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no. You come to me, I will glorify you. I will lift your position in society. I will make people think twice about you. If you come to me, I will elevate you. You go to others, I will lower you. So the choice is yours. And then the hadith and the dua continues as she says, وَالْحَمْدُلِلَّهِ الَّذِي يَحْلُمْ عَنِّي حَتَّى كَأَنَّهُ لَا ذَنْبِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this akhlaq of his, that every time you sin, you ask him for forgiveness, he can give you to the, to the extent where you feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgotten about it. One comes to us, when someone does something wrong by us, we keep it in our hearts until the day we die. I will never forgive him. We say to him, the mythic majula till the day of judgment. See how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see how we are. So this is what Allah gives us, and this is what we give in return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on the day of Eid, let me see, am I among those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives and they give back, or the ones who are slow, they don't give, they stingy, they don't forgive, which one am I? When it comes to the concept of crying, Imam Salamullah alayhi in this dua, if you look at the upon one of the most important pages of our life that every one of us will go through, a phase that is not escaping it, which is death. When it comes to crying and bukha, the Imam says, How was it that I cannot cry when I have no idea where am I going? Am I going to be in hell? Or am I going to be in heaven? But truly, I should sit and cry day and night because my destination is not clear to me. Myself is fooling me. One day tell me to go this way, one day tell me to go this way, and I'm not sure. Even the day is also trying to cheat me and deceive me. The angels of death is upon our heads day and night. The hadith says every, every day, Malak al Maud, he sees our faces five times a day, he goes through our faces. So the angels of death always upon our hands, but yet we forget. Yet we think that Allah is not there. So why shouldn't I cry? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Because what's coming is very great that we need to sit and um, contemplate. Then the Imam, he talks about the stages. He says, that state itself is extremely hard. If you read the, uh, the, the wire from the Ayyubayd, when the soul gets extracted from the body, it's a very painful stage. And it always depends on your action. If you done good, then the process will be easy. If you done bad, the process will be extremely painful. The grave itself is a very dark place that we're going to go to. But yet, you could enlighten that grave by your deed. Again, if you make it good, it will be good. So it's up to you. The grave itself is a very tight place. It's not a house. It's not a castle. So one needs to understand, should I be crying or should I be laughing? Then one has to himself decide and judge. Then the Imam says, أَبْكِي لِخُرُوجِي مِنْ قَبْرِي أَرْيَانًا دَلِيلًا 
because there will, there will come a time where there is nothing that will clothe us, nothing will cover us. We will become naked in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only thing that can cover me is my good deeds. So one needs to be very careful. I will carry my weights, my burdens, my sins on my back. You could, you could, that weight on your back, you could make it less by doing my good deeds. Everyone on that day will be busy. No one will come to your help. No one is going to come to my help. Nor a father, nor a son, nor a daughter, nor a friend. Everyone says, my ya nafsi. Everyone will be worried about himself. So am I going to put myself in a position where am I going to be in need? Or am I going to put myself in a position where I'm not in need of anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then again, biman kanu yaksibuni. Then the Imam says, Wujuhun ya mu'adhin musfara, which is a verse from the Qur'an. Bahikatun mustabshya. On that day, if you do good, you'll be laughing. I, I said in the beginning, how are you going to go, laughing or crying? If you do that, if you say I end up doing what? Wujuhun bahikatun mustabshya. Happy, laughing, excited, because you've done all that you could do in this world. On the other hand, there are other places. Allah said, وَوُجُوهٌ يَا مُعَدٍ عَلَيْهَا غَبَرٍ تَرْحَقُهَا قَتَرٍ And the Imam asked those who are villa. And on the opposite are faces that are humiliated, darkened, dirty, and they are humbled, and they are humiliated because of the sins that they do. So when it comes to the day of Eid, one needs to think before he loves and gets himself and puts himself in a position of joy and happiness. Where am I standing when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Should I be really happy and excited because it's time for me to eat? Or is it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I'm not sure has He forgiven me or not? For 30, 30 days and 30 nights, what have I accomplished? Am I certain that Allah has forgiven my sin? At the end, we get to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this will, with this I conclude, the Imam says at the end of the dua, he says, Ilahi wa Sayyidi, O oh my Lord, my Master, wa azzatika wa jalalik. So he swears by the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La'in qalakhani bidnubi. If you come and ask about my sins, and say to me, what have you done? La'utalibannaka bi'afrik. Because at the end of the day, it's only the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is willing to take us to heaven. Not our deeds. If we do everything good in this world, it will not be sufficient. The only thing that will be sufficient is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the end of the day, the generosity of God, what we, or what we depend on on the day of judgment. Last resort, this is what we don't if you take me there. We have to reach a stage of love to the extent that hellfire will not have any effect on us. And this is a very extreme level of, of pain. But love will ease that pain. When it comes to the concept of crying, and I will conclude and end with this. We could cry for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will make us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we could cry for the Ahl Bay Salaamullah alayhim, and that will make us closer to the Ahl Bay Salaamullah alayhim. But amongst the Ahl Bay, there's one ark, there's one ship that is faster than all the ships. One ark of salvation, which is an Imam al Hussein Salaamullah alayhim. So crying for Imam al Hussein is one of the ways that will get us to the, to the other side happy and safe. There's a, a very small poem I will read and I conclude. And uh, most of you have heard this, have this poem, but for the, for the blessings of our reciters. It says, وَحَيْرَةً مَا الْأَكْرَيْنَا وَشَتَّتَكَ الْهَوَى بَيْنًا فَبَيْنًا فَلَا تَحْذَى الْمَوْقَرْ بِاللَّهِ عَيْنًا إِذَا شِئْتَ النَّجَاةً فَزَرْ حُسَيْنًا كَيْ تَلْقَ الْإِلَاهَ قَرِيرَ عَيْنًا إذا علم الملائكة منك عزما تروم مجاره كتبوك رسما وحرمت الجحيم عليك حتما لأن النار ليست مثل جسما عليه غبار زوار حسينا 
وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وآل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين